Team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Ain't Graven here with another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the Team Keep It Clean patrons. You can just send it directly on Patreon. If you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. If you would not like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, then you don't have to go to patreon.com slash vids. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all know, like... Like I, I don't, even, I shouldn't even say it in the beginning of these videos anymore. That it's, it's gonna be some fire questions because y'all already know it's gonna be some fire questions, like it always is. Starting off with a patron, my guy Martin. He said, "I ain't graving hope all as well. I know we like to blame Harbaugh when the offensive coordinator is doing bad. Saying, let's look at the root of the problem, point it back at Harbaugh, but Harbaugh has also had a lot of OCs and DCs under him." And they have went on to become head coaches. Yeah, I understand he's made some bad decisions this year. Like, why put Tyson Williams in the doghouse all year long? Doesn't make any sense, too. But I don't think it's fair to point the finger back at Harbaugh when we say fire Greg Roman. When Harbaugh has had plenty of success with other OCs like Gary Kubiak. I think for the most part, Harbaugh lets his coordinators do their job. So how can we say Harbaugh is the reason for the offense being bad? That's a really good question. I, I, I love this question, and I appreciate this question. The answer to this question for me is because we're always saying the same thing. We're always saying, oh, this offensive coordinator is bad. Oh, this offensive coordinator is stale. Oh, this offensive coordinator, he ain't doing nothing. Oh, this offensive coordinator ain't no good. We have said that time and time and time and time and time and time again. Who hires those offensive coordinators? Nine times out of ten. Except the, the, that 10th that time when, uh, when, when, when Bishotti and all them stepped in, when the front office stepped in to hire Gary Kubiak. Who hired all those guys? Harbaugh. Harbaugh brought them in. And th that, that's been the thing. It just, for me, with, with the offensive coordinators... I just feel like he brings in somebody that, that, that's not going to go on to, to, to do bigger and better things. He, he usually brings in guys that have already peaked, that have already had their ultimate level of success, and that's it. Before the Ravens. Nine, like I said, nine times out of ten, before the Ravens. Um, so it's just, that's why it, it goes back to Harbaugh, because he does have accountability in the grand scheme of things. Because he's the leader. In my opinion, that's like a, a, a kid that's always acting up. Man, this kid is so bad in school. Why is this kid always acting up? Over in, in, in this class, he acts up. In that class, he acts up. In that class, he acts up. Who's the parents? What are the parents doing? Do, do the parents not have control over their kid? What, what are these parents doing and what are these parents teaching their kid because they have the ultimate responsibility over their child? It's the same way with Harbaugh and the offensive court. Yes, he lets his coordinators coordinate, but sometimes that can be a problem. If you see things, if, if you just letting somebody do something, like the parent and the kid, for example, if the parent just continues to let the kid act up, how responsible is that parent really being? If Harbaugh just lets his offensive coordinators act up, how responsible is Harbaugh really being? Next question came from my boy Enonic. Who ain't seen a question from my guy Enonic in a while, man? Appreciate it. He said, good afternoon. Uh, I hope all the team keep it clean are doing well, staying Raven strong, and C-19 free. I've been quiet this season, but always watch the Viz. Just watch the Viz on the Ravens need to make some serious changes, and I'll have to admit, this has been one of the most frustrating seasons I've endured as a Ravens fan in a long time. <laughs> Every season we lose two to three games due to coaching decisions and overthinking. Harbs versus Andy Reid, Roman versus Roman, analytics, etc. And in a season wrought with COVID and the injury bug, those losses have more than tripled. We are wasting NFL careers here. If this were a corporation, I'd say fans' comments are focusing on the need for changes made by their directors a.k.a. the head coach, offensive coordinator, and defensive coordinator, and not changes initiated by the AVP, EDC, the GM, or the CEO, a.k.a. the company owner, Steve Bashotti. I'm not going to say I know or understand Mr. Bashotti's management style or his corporate goals, but he has got to be aware of the product on the field. In my mind, until he makes or calls for the changes necessary, I'm not sure the serious changes you referred to in the video will ever take place. What do you 
think. Can't wait to see you get to 50K. Hey, appreciate that. We are uh, a little less than a thousand away. That's going to be weird seeing that, but no rush. Whenever it happens, it happens. I appreciate you being a, a big, big, big part of that. Thank you. Um, and yeah, I, I, I do think any like serious, serious changes would have to come from the top. I know in that video, a, a lot of people, they were like, oh, why would you want to get rid of Harbaugh, man? And I never once in the video said fire Harbaugh. Not one time. Not one time did I ever say fire Harbaugh. But I did say that if something were to happen to Harbaugh, which I don't expect, but if something were to happen to Harbaugh, I do think and believe the Ravens would be just fine. Uh, I, I, a lot of uh, Ravens fans, their concern is if something were to happen to Harbaugh, which again, we know it's not. Uh, but if something were to happen to Harbaugh, who would you replace him with? Who would you replace John Harbaugh with? That, that is the million dollar question from so many Ravens fans. Who would you replace him with? Because I, I, that's what I see everybody say. But, and they, uh, he's a Super Bowl champion. He's a leader. And again, great qualities, amazing qualities. Brings the team together. They fight for him. Great qualities. Billick. Ryan Billick. He was a leader. Brought the team together. Also a Super Bowl winner. Super Bowl, Super Bowl head coach for the Ravens. And what they do? They fired him. They got rid of him. And what did they do? They replaced him with a special teams coach. Yeah, he coached the defensive backs before too. But they replaced him with a special teams coach. They, act, they wanted to hire Jason Garrett. They wanted to. They wanted to hire Jason Garrett. But that didn't happen. John Harbaugh, he, they replaced him with a special teams coach who wasn't even their first choice. John Harbaugh wasn't even the Ravens' first choice. So when people trip out about, oh, man, who, who would replace Harbaugh? Ravens would find somebody. They would find somebody. This would be a very attractive job. People, if, if they, and, and we understand if Harbaugh ever got fired, we know he won't, at least this year, but if he ever got fired, we know he would have a job like that. We, oh, we already know that. Cause we've seen other head coaches who have accomplished less get, get jobs like that. So we know Harbaugh would have a job. We'd be happy for him if he got a job too. But, Ravens would not all, oh, what Ravens would not just crumble because Harbaugh was gone. They wouldn't. They wouldn't. And like I said in the video about the changes, it would be very hard. Like, like it would be so hard for a head coach to come here and just fail. It would be so like again. You, I was just explaining to somebody in the comment section the other day. I, so you, you got Lamar. You got J.K., you got Gus, you got Hollywood, you got Bateman, you got Mark Andrews, you got Duvernay, you got Proche, you got Boykin, you got, uh, we'll, we got Zeitler, we'll see what happens with Bozeman, you got Makari, uh, you got uh, Ben Cleveland, you got Ronnie Stanley hopefully coming back healthy, you got a possible Jawan James, somebody mentioned, uh, sent me a DM today, they're like, oh, engraving, I was listening to the video, and you mentioned all these people who, who a possible new head coach could have, and you forgot about Brandon Knight, I'm like, oh man, we had Brandon Knight, because the Ravens still have his rights, the one that they traded, I mean, not traded, they signed off the Cowboys practice squad, but he found out that he was going to be a Raven, he was like, mm, nah, I'm straight, I'm, I'll retire, but no, nah, he did say he got to work on like his mental health and stuff, so shout out to him, but you got like so many nice core players. Then on defense, you got an Adafe away. You got a Bowser. You got a uh, Matt Abike. Uh, you got a Marlon Humphrey. You got a Marcus Peters, who even though I think they'll restructure his contract, some, I don't think he's going to come back on whatever contract he's on, but you got a Marcus Peters. You got a Brandon Stevens, who's been getting more and more comfortable as a safety. You got Chuck Clark, who had the game of his life last week. Now, that'd be nice if we get a lot more of those, but we know it's tough. NFL is tough, and it's tough to play defense. But anyway, you, you, the, uh, if, they, if they did get a new head coach, he would have such a nice core of young players that it would be very hard for him to not have success. And yeah, he would implement uh, his own scheme, so Ravens would need to change some things. I mean, that, that's, that's my biggest thing. They need to change some things. And like I said, even if, and I, I don't expect them to fire Harbaugh, but even with, it, it's a possibility that they could change it with Harbaugh. It would just take a lot of just willingness to, to, to change what they've been doing, their style, that old school philosophy, 
Let it go. It's time to up this thing, man. It's time to up the passing game. And it, just because you really up the passing game, it doesn't mean that you forget about the running game. It doesn't mean that at all. But it's time for Ravens to really get with the times. They have to. But, yes, for, for that to happen, I truly believe the call would have to come from upstairs. It would have to come from upstairs to where they were like, hey, look, we know that this has been an injury-riddled season. We get it. But, again, that's an, I think that's another thing that a, people, a lot of people had a, a lot of misconceptions on with that video about the changes. They thought that we were speaking about changes just because of how this year has been. No, my friends. No. That video was far beyond just about this year. It's about the entire Ravens philosophy moving forward. And especially on offense. Like 85% on offense. Defense, yeah, y'all have 15%. I mean, it should be more, but biggest thing is offense. Because you have this dynamic play in Lamar. You have these crazy talented wide. You got some really talented, some good talent at wide receiver. A good mix of a lot of things. Bateman got good speed, but excellent route runner. Uh, Hollywood, good route runner, good speed. That's deep threat. Then you got James Prochet, not the fastest, but he, he catches everything that gets thrown to him. And even when it looks like he ain't about to catch it, if it looks like he's about to drop it, he'll still catch it. You got Devin Duvernay, who is just like this, this gadget, just a straight up weapon. You got Mark Andrews. What else I need to say about Mark? I don't even need to say nothing. You got Mark Andrews. You got J.K. Dobbins, an excellent runner who has excellent balance. He has excellent balance, good speed, and underrated power. You have Gus Edwards, who has underrated speed, for, especially for his size. Like, you think, oh, this is, this is a big fella. He, he ain't going to be moving like that. Wrong. You got Gus Edwards. And he, he'll run somebody over there. But you, you got, like, these, these weapons. These weapons, but how will they be utilized? Will this current staff, will they maximize these weapons? Will they maximize just the usage of these weapons? How is the decision making going to be? Because we know every head coach, sometimes they're going to make some bad decisions. It happens. But how willing or unwilling will this staff be to adjusting? to making changes to really maximize this offense. That's my concern. It's not about this year. This year is included, but it's not just about this year. It, it, it's just about recent history, period. The whole tenor, period. Because again, 2008 to 2012, lovely. Lovely. Uh, amazing. Oh my goodness. We just winning, 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 winning. All we do is win, 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 no matter what. But, and I and I, and I, I know I would always see this argument. Like, oh man, after Ray Lewis and Aaron Reed left, John Harbaugh ain't do nothing. I always see that argument and I would think, hmm, but wait. Wait a minute. Hold up. Is that? Because after they did leave, like when they were here, Ravens, like, they, they were doing their thing. They were doing their thing. And after they left, it's like everything, like, came to a halt. Everything stopped. It was such a, a seismic shift in the Ravens organization. It was such a huge change. And it was like, whoa, this, whoa, what's, what's, what's going on here? What, what, what happened? Felt like we got blipped. I was like, whoa, where, where are we? Whoa, eight and eight. Whoa, what's, what's eight and eight? What's that? Gross. Uh, but then um, then after that, yeah, 2014, they got to the playoffs. They got a win in the playoffs, 2014. So that was cool. But after that, that was it. All up until, what, last year, right? Yeah, last year was the first win in the playoffs. Had success in 2019. I uh, had some end of the year success in 2018. Um, this year's a little shaky, but it's just, but the, the, the problems, the, the, the problems that, like we talked about earlier in the video, it's been those consistent problems, man. Offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator, offensive coordinator. Oh, man, what's wrong with the offense? What's wrong with the offense? And we keep bringing in new guys at offensive coordinator, keep changing guys at offensive coordinator, keep new guys at offensive coordinator. But... 
who's been in control of bringing these guys in. So this is why I just say, like, changes need to be made. Significant changes need to be made. But, yes, uh, it's going to have to be from upstairs, the way, what it seems. Unless, unless like, Harbaugh, as the, the leader of the team, unless he just has this huge change all of a sudden. And he's just willing to, like, oh, you know what, I'm not going to hire somebody who has peaked. I'm not going to bring in somebody that I worked with before under Andy Reid on the Eagles. I'm not going to bring in one of my boys, even though, you know, hashtag good hardball. He be putting his boys on and I respect it. But it's not what's best for business. I would love to see Harbaugh do what's best for business when bringing people on. And if he can't do what's best for business, then Bashadi and EDC, they'll have to do it. Next question came from my guy, Brandon. He said, hey, Graven, I just wanted to know what you think about the draft. <laughs> I got a feeling EDC is going to make some magic in the draft. Uh, look at all the fourth round picks we have. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we got to just hope that uh, with all the fourth and fifth and whatever picks we have, that they make the team. But anyway, he said, uh, we're notorious for drafting backwards in the first round. But I think we have the ammunition to trade up and grab a game-changing player. A lot of mock drafts have us taking a linebacker, but I would rather have a monster offensive lineman. That's all for me. Hope you and the fam are good. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, as far as the draft, um, it's, it's very important. Uh, I, I, right now, the way that things are going, I don't expect Lamar to sign a contract this offseason. Um, so it's important. I mean, it's always important, but it's very important that uh, Eric DaCosta really hits uh, on this draft um, because it's with the drafts. It hasn't always been um, the best uh, like this. OK, this draft. Let's look at this draft, for example. Bateman, Adafi, Away, Ben Cleveland, Brandon Stevens. OK, all impact players. Uh, Tylen Wallace. He's been on the field a little bit more, but understand with, with Sammy Watkins, with Hollywood, with Rashad Bateman, uh, Mark Andrews, and, and this Ravens scheme, I did never expected him to go off this season. Didn't expect him to go off. Didn't expect him to be a major contributor or anything like that. He's been on special teams, and when he's got in, he's done his thing. Oh, Prochet, Duvernay, too. So it wasn't ex expected that he would have some major contribution. Uh, but then Sean Wade, we know what happened with that. Uh, Dalen Hayes, uh, I think early on, I think he was just a stash, but then they brought him back, but then he got hurt again. So injury. So, and then Ben Mason, and we know what happened with that. Just, just in case y'all forgot, anybody forgot, um, Sean Wade, he was traded to the Patriots because the Ravens felt like they had too many corners. And at the time I was like, okay, they did have a lot of corners, but I said, I hated the trade because our secondary depth always gets tested, always gets tested, but is what it is uh and then ben mason they cut the, they, they cut ben mason in hopes to re-sign him to the practice squad well that was at least my thinking um and then maybe they had like a handshake deal and ben mason was like uh never mind i want to go back home i've been a patriots fan all my life and he went there right now um i don't know what sean wade is doing i don't know what ben mason is doing uh but it's just those are how it worked out with those guys. So this this draft right here, I mean this year, um, early on, it was pretty good. It had some impactful players because that's what you look for from a draft. The, the players that are going to make an impact on your team, going to help out your team. The two first round draft picks, for sure, especially Adafi away. Um, now last year, Patrick Queen, okay, J.K. Dobbins, Matt Abike, we've been hoping for a little bit more. Um, but the Devin Duvernay, Malik Harrison, uh, he hasn't really had a big impact. Tyree Phillips has had a big impact, but it, I don't think it's been the, the most positive impact. Got some improvements that he can make. So it's been a bit rough for him uh, over these past two years. Uh, ben Bredesen, he got traded to the Giants. Uh, Broderick Washington, okay, he's been playing more, especially with all the injuries and stuff and the depth. So he's been having an impact. James Prochet, he's been active, inactive, active, inactive. It's, a lot of inconsistencies. Geno Stone, they cut him. They cut him. Then he went to the Texans. Then the Texans, uh, they cut him. And then the Ravens like, oh, no, come back home. Come back home. So as far as impact from this draft, um, it, it is a little shaky. 
a little shaky. Patrick Queen, yes. J.K. Dobbins, yes. Matt BK, yeah. Devin DuVernay, yes. Malik Harrison, no. Tyree Phillips, yes, but not in the best way, but yes. Ben Bredesen, not at all. He got traded. Braddock Washington, now a little bit. Uh, Proche, kind of. Geno Stone, uh, a little bit. So this draft, you're you getting, you getting some impact. Um, now you go to 2019. Hollywood, impact. Ferguson, no. Boykin, no, nah, not really. Uh, Justice Hill, no. Nah. Uh, ben Powers, yeah, a little bit. Eamon Marshall, no. Dalen Mack, no. Trace McSorley, a little bit. But again, Trace McSorley, context because he is a backup quarterback. And we had RG3, so nothing was really expected from Trace McSorley. So that's kind of a, uh, a whatever about Trace. But my point is that uh, we, we need to see impact players uh, from the draft. We need to see impact players from the draft. And it seems as if every year Eric DaCosta gets a little better, a little better. And, I mean, you look at that, I, and I hate going back here, man, because it's like, it's not that it's not fair, but it's almost like not fair because Ozzy Newsom's last draft in 2018, my goodness, man, what were you thinking, Ozzy? In a good way, what were you thinking? Like, all right, Hayden Hurst, who for the Ravens, he was a ball, but we understand injury happened and Mark Andrews was like, oh, my chance? Okay, I'm taking it. Now we $56 million later, uh, broken Ravens receiving records later. Anyway, Hayden Hurst, Lamar Jackson, well, he's kind of good, uh, Orlando Brown Jr., Mark Andrews, Anthony Avery, Kenny Young, he was all right, I like Kenny Young, but Ravens were like, no, we like Marcus Peters better, and I'm like, okay, I ain't mad at that, Jaleel Scott, Jordan Lastly, uh, you, can't, you can't hit on everybody, um, Deshaun Elliott, boom, Greg Sinat, oh, I remember that, that, that famous foot injury that he had. When he posted that himself in that walking boot, oh, that was it. Ravens were heated, and they were like, no, you're out of here. Um, <laughs> Bradley Bo Bradley Bozeman was a six-round pick? I didn't know that. I did not realize Bradley Bozeman was a six-round pick. And so many times when I go back to the 2018 draft, I forget that Bradley Bozeman was in that draft. I forget that all the time. Wow, that's crazy, man. And Zach Siler. A lot of Ravens fans like Zach Siler, but it just didn't work out. He went over, he balled for the Dolphins, and I think he's still on the Dolphins. But, yeah, it just didn't work out. Um, so, yeah. So, Ozzy, with that last draft, like, you talk, you talk about impact play. Ooh, you talk about impact players in depth. Oh, yeah. The, the, those first five picks. And, and then it's like it was top heavy and bottom heavy. And in the middle, it was like, ooh. Because the top, Hayden Hurst, Lamar Jackson, Lando Brown, Mark Andrews, Anthony Avery. Then the bottom, Deshaun Elliott, Bradley Bozeman, Zach Siler. Well, impact players in the league, not necessarily on the Ravens for Zach Siler. But in the middle, it was Kenny Young, Jaleel Scott, Jordan Leslie. So he ain't smashed the draft all the way through, but where he killed the draft, no, he absolutely murdered it. He absolutely, where he got it right, ooh, he got it way right, all the way right. So um, back to my guy's question, my guy Brandon's question about the draft. Yeah, it's about impact players. You, you got to get impact players in this draft. It's important. You got Lamar's contract coming up. Uh, you got players that are going to be leaving via free agency, via cap casualty, via all that. So you got to get this thing right. You too, T, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. Got to made it. Boy, that's my homie. Ain't that right and graven? Right and graven. Shout out to Graven.